Okay, so we're going to look at simple machine problems uh, today. I'm going to do a few for you and then you can go from there. Um, let's say that we have a second class lever and we have a force of 100 newtons pushing down on it and we want to know what the effort force is and we also know that the distance from here to here is 3 feet and from here to here is 5 feet so um, what we can do is we can actually calculate the ideal mechanical advantage and that's effort distance over resistance distance so we've got five feet over three feet pretty straightforward and then let's say for example that it says determine the ideal effort force required to lift the 100 newton mat, uh, weight. Again, listen to it. Determine the ideal effort force required to lift this. Well, if we want to know the ideal effort force, we're assuming that there is no friction in this system. So therefore, the IMA equals the AMA. And we know that AMA is equal to resistance force over effort force. So our effort force is going to be resistance over the AMA. So let's substitute. We have 100 newtons. In the AMA, it's the same as the IMA. So when we solve for the effort force, We have 100 divided by 100, which then rounds to 60. Yeah. Alright, I'm going to draw some pictures for you. Um, let's look at number 7. So we're going to do number 7 and kind of draw the picture there. We have 4 inch long tweezers. So this distance from here to here would be 4 inches. Then we're grabbing something on the end here. So we're going to be applying a force here. And then it applies a force back on the tweezers here. And we know the difference. We want to know that if I, or if I move my force too close, then it squeezes much harder on this end and it could damage this piece. So this should help you just kind of isolate and just do use this part right here where this is your pivot and just use one of these here um, and isolate it as a single single lever arm when actually tweezers are, are two lever arms. Okay, let's look at 18. Um, 18, it gives us some things. It says the slope has to be 1 to 12. And if you remember slope, is equal to, most people know it as rise over run. Uh, I like to say it's the change in y over the change in x. So if that value is 1 to 12, that means that for every one foot that we go up, we had to come 12 feet for that. So if we go two feet up, then we're going to come across another 12 feet <coughs> for that. And we want to determine how long of a ramp we need to get up that incline. So most of you should be able to solve 24 here, 2 here, find the hypotenuse. Right, let's look at uh, the wedge problem. Um, here we have a wedge and it is going to look like this. Okay, so here's our piece of metal, 
and it's going to be pushed downward into the metal and it's going to shear the metal so it's going to break it here and separate the metal so this piece actually stays the same but it then pushes this piece out along this edge and we know that this is a 45 degree angle and it tells us that that this blade here is a quarter of an inch wide. So if I know that this is a 45 and this is a 90, I should be able to determine this size here, which is the height that it goes in to separate it that distance. Okay, so this is the height that it goes in and this is the, the length that it separates the width that it separates this piece. So that should give me my effort distance and that should give me my resistance distance that it pushes it apart. So hopefully that helps with that particular drawing. Uh, the screw. Um, a nut driver, uh, if you don't know what that is, it looks like a screwdriver but then it has, um, so it has a handle and then right here at the end uh, it actually has a hex um, kind of head on the inside. So then this goes on top of your screw, so if you're, or your bolt. So when this is put on there, essentially we're not concerned about any of this information. When these are attached, it's now considered one simple machine. We're now concerned about the handle diameter because that handle is going to spin through some distance. And then how far down is the screw going to go? Well, it's going to go down one pitch. So those are the two things that we're only concerned about. Um, we want to know the diameter of the handle so we can figure out circumference. And then we need to know the pitch so we can find that. So hopefully those, uh, those things will help you on getting this homework uh, completed um, and done well.